The valley known as Sleepy Hollow hides from the world in the high hills of the state of New York. Many stories have been told about the quiet valley, but the story that most people believe is about the man who rides a horse at night. The story says a man died many years ago during the American Revolutionary War. His head was shot off. Every night he rises from the burial place, jumps on his horse and rides through the valley, looking for his severed head. Near Sleepy Hollow, there lies a village called Terrytown. It was settled many years ago by people from Holland. The village had a small school. It was just a single teacher. His name was Ichabod Crane. Ichabod Crane was a good name for him because he was tall and thin, just like a crane. His shoulders were small, joined with two long arms. His head was small too flat on top. He had big ears, large glossy green eyes and a long nose. Ichabod did not make much money as a teacher. Although he was tall and thin, he ate like a fat man. To help him pay for his food, he earned extra money teaching the young people how to sing. Every Sunday after church, Ichabod taught singing. Among the ladies Ichabod taught was one Katrina von Tessel. She was the only daughter of a rich Dutch farmer. She was a girl in bloom, much like a round, red, rosy apple. Ichabod had a soft and foolish heart for the ladies and soon found himself interested in Miss Van Tessel. Ichabod's eyes opened wide when he saw the riches of Katrina's farm, the miles of apple trees and wheat fields and hundreds of fat farm animals. He could already see himself as the master of the Fontessel farm, with Katrina as his wife. But there were many problems blocking the road to Katrina's heart. One was a strong young man named Brom van Brunt. Brom was a hero to all the young ladies. His shoulders were big, his back was wide, and his hair was so short and curly. He always won the horse races in Terrytown and earned many prizes. Brom was never seen without a horse. Sometimes late at night, Brom and his friends would rush through the town shouting loudly on top of their horses. Tired old ladies would awaken from their sleep and say, Why there goes Brom from Brunt, leading his wild group again. That was the enemy Ichabod had to defeat for Katrina's heart. Stronger and wiser men could not have tried, but Ichabod had a plan. He could not fight his enemy in the open so he did it silently and secretly. He made many visits to Katrina's farm and made her think he was helping her to sing better. Time passed and the town people thought Ichabod was winning. Brahms horses were never seen at Katrina's house on Sunday nights anymore. One day in autumn Ichabod was asked to come to a big party at the Fantessa home. He dressed in his best clothes. A farmer loaned him an old horse for the long trip to the party. The house was filled with farmers and their wives, red-faced daughters and clean, washed sons. The tables were filled with many different things to eat. Wine filled many glasses. Brom from Brunt rode to the party on his fastest horse, called Daredevil. All the young ladies smiled happily when they saw him. Soon, music filled the rooms and everyone began to dance and sing. Ichabod was happy dancing with Katrina as Brom looked at him with a jealous heart. The night passed, the music stopped, and the young people sat together to tell stories about the Revolutionary War. Soon stories about Sleepy Hollow were told. The most feared story was about the rider looking for his lost head. One farmer told how he raised a headless man on a horse. The farmer ran his horse faster and faster the horsemen followed over bush and stone until they came to the end of the valley. There the headless horseman suddenly stopped. Gone were his clothes and skin. All that was left was a man with white bones shining in the moonlight. The stories ended and time came to leave the party. Ichabod seemed very happy 
until he said goodnight to Katrina. She was distant. Was she ending their romance? He left feeling very sad. Had Katrina been seeing Ichabod just to make Bram from Bram jealous so he would marry her? Well, Ichabod began his long ride home on the hills that surrounded Terrytown. He had never felt so lonely in his life. He began to whistle as he came close to the tree where a man had been killed years ago by rebels. He thought he saw something white move in the tree. But no, it was only the moonlight shining and moving on the trees. Then he heard a sound. His body shook. He kicked his horse faster. The old horse tried to run, but almost fell in the river. Ichabod hit the horse again. The horse ran fast and then suddenly stopped, almost throwing Ichabod to the ground. There, in the dark woods on the side of the river, where the bushes grow low, stood an ugly thing, big and black. It did not move. It seemed ready to jump like a giant monster. Ichabod's hair stood straight up. It was too late to run, and in his fear, he did the only thing he could. A shaking voice broke the silent valley. Who are you? The thing did not answer back. Ichabod asked again. Still no answer. Ichabod's old horse began to move forward. The black thing began to move along the side of Ichabod's horse in the dark. Ichabod made his horse run faster. The black thing moved with them. Side by side they moved, slowly at first. Then Ichabod felt his heart sink. Up a hill they moved above the shadows of the trees. For a moment the moon shone down, and to Ichabod's horror, he saw it was a horse, and it had a rider. But the rider's head was not on his body. It was in front of the rider, resting on the horse. Ichabod kicked and hit his old horse with all his power. Away they rushed through the bushes and trees across the valley of Sleepy Hollow. Up ahead was an old church bridge where the headless horseman stops and returns to his burial place. If only I can get there first, I'm safe, thought Ichabod. He kicked his horse again. The horse jumped onto the bridge and raced over it like a sound of thunder. Ichabod looked back to see if the headless man had stopped. The man picked up his own head and threw it with a powerful force. The head hit Ichabod in the face and knocked him immediately off his horse into the dirt below. <coughs> they found Ichabod's horse the next day, peacefully eating grass. They could not find Ichabod. They walked across the valley. They saw the footmarks of Ichabod's horse as it had raced through the valley. They even found Ichabod's old hat in the dust near the bridge, but they did not find Ichabod. The only other thing they found was lying near Ichabod's head. It was the broken pieces of a round orange pumpkin. The town people talked about Ichabod for many weeks. They remembered the frightening stories of the valley. And finally, they came to believe that the headless horseman had carried Ichabod away. Much later, an old farmer returned from a visit to New York City. He said he was sure he saw Ichabod there. He thought Ichabod had silently left Sleepy Hollow because he had lost Katrina. As for Katrina, her mother and father gave her a big wedding when she married Brom from Brunt. Many people who went to the wedding saw that Brom smiled whenever Ichabod's name was spoken. And they wondered why he laughed out loud when anyone talked about the broken orange found lying near Ichabod's old dusty hat. <laughs>